Morning. Um, I think I'm going to try and go back to your last chart on the basis that um, I didn't manage to bring any of mine. So, uh, <laughs> so you're going to have to, have to listen to me. Uh, good morning. Uh, I run uh, an investment company on the quay side in Newcastle, and I've got interests in a variety of businesses in the region. Um, but I'm also the business member of the LET board with lead responsibility for access to finance. So over the last two years, we focused on two things mainly. First is ensuring that we have the best developed venture capital market for our SMEs in the country outside London. And secondly, laying the groundwork for a better infrastructure in our region. Now we are an economy that's dependent upon our SMEs. If we want real growth, we need to migrate to a model closer to that of Germany, where venture capital funding is more readily available and is used. Now our SMEs in the Northeast do have a competitive advantage because of the public-private funds managed under the Jeremy program. So far, around 80 million pounds has been invested, uh, around 600 companies have been funded, and approaching 10,000 jobs created. This is a key driver of private sector growth and quality jobs for our people. We are now focused on securing a new, bigger, and better fund for the next <coughs> five years. The independent ECOS report commissioned by Northeast Access to Finance has quantified demand for a fund of 200 million pounds in the Northeast region. To deliver that, we need to source 90 million pounds of public funding, strike deals with commercial lenders, and then put this to work, ideally matched by private sector funds. If we can also build in the impact of legacy funds from the first round of Jeremy investing, we could be looking at investing approaching half a billion pounds into our SMEs between 2014 and 2020. This is a very big opportunity to build a real competitive advantage for our SMEs in the Northeast. But this is not a done deal. To achieve it, we need money, unity, and a powerful business case. First, the money. Well, the government has allocated 554 million euros from the next round of European regional funding to our LEP area. If we can agree amongst ourselves that it would be right to use some of this money for Jeremy too, then I believe we can secure the funds we need. So we also need unity. We've been focused on creating the case for these funds, and as a result of that, the case for a new fund runs through the Adonis report published last March. The same vision is also built into the LEPS draft proposals recommending how our European fund should be spent, submitted this September. The final step will be to draft a compelling business case. I'm glad to say that in September, all the public bodies with responsibility for access to finance agreed that Andrew Mitchell of Northeast Finance will lead a team on behalf of the LEP to develop and promote these proposals. So with the support of Northeast Finance, I am confident that we can persuade the LEP board and the combined authority that this is the right use for some of our European funds, and we can then persuade government. If we succeed, we can have the next round of funds available from mid-2014. So as well as finance for our SMEs, we need finance to develop our infrastructure. We have made progress. We've worked with our local authorities to secure significant funding packages to help our key cities, notably with 200 million going into the Newcastle City deal. We've established a Northeast Investment Fund and secured 55 million pounds of funding. In the short term, we focused this on getting the North East building again. <coughs> Importantly, we made this a loan fund for building projects, not a grant fund. That means that when these projects are complete, we get our money back and we can spend them again. These are some of the funds supporting the cranes going up in our region right now. For example, you see them in the Stevenson Quarter in Newcastle, the development of South Shields Town Centre, the development of the Vork site in Sunderland, amongst others. I'm glad to say that we have committed all the money we received from the first round of funds we secured. And by mid-2014, we will start to get these loan monies back. We have created a proper working evergreen fund. And we are now looking for developers to come to us with more projects that are viable, but are not currently funded. 
We've also established three enterprise zones where land and tax breaks are attracting new investors to the banks of the Tyne, to the A19 around Sunderland and Blythe Valley. As you've heard, we have in our sites transport, transport expenditure to widen the Western Bypass, to secure a new direct air route from Newcastle to the United States, and a variety of smaller transport initiatives designed to improve connectivity within the region. Finally, we are working now on developing a Jessica Fund, essentially a deal with government and other funding institutions to support much larger infrastructure projects that this region will need in the future. Manchester LEP struck a £2 billion funding package with the government. This was essentially upfront investment to be paid back from future business rates from successful developments. There is no reason we can't secure a matching level of investment if we put the right proposition to the government in the right way. So the focus of our work to date has been on making the case for a bigger and better public-private venture capital market for our SMEs in the Northeast and on securing the funds to build our infrastructure. We will find out whether this work has been productive over the coming 12 months. Thank you. <laughs>